do to not drop back anymore. You, you, you're in the habit of dropping way, way back, which I get, like that's, you know, you're avoiding the rush, but you're so far back that, like, we're not, even if we complete the pass, like, they've had so much time to, to react to the pass um, that we got to get you just throwing you in and out of here, throwing quick, um, just start closer to the center and just catch it and get, like, you said you play softball, right? Play softball? Did you say you wanted to play softball? Uh, but you've never played before? Or you're just going to all of a sudden play? Well, did you ever play infield at all? So when you're an infielder, like, you got to, you're catching and throwing all in one motion. That's the way quarterback has to be on some of the passes. We got to get the ball out faster to the receivers. But then you told me I'm throwing. I've never, no, that's on one play. I think you're getting one play confused with all the other plays. On Orlando, yeah, but we're going to change that play to where you actually, instead of dropping backwards, in, in all honesty, that's more, that's more Nina's fault. She, she's, like, when she releases, that's when you, you have to throw it. I mean, you could wait, I guess, still. She's got to wait longer. So I've got two or three things i got to talk to her about. All right, what do we say about similar triangles? She wasn't there that last meeting. So sides are in proportion. So make sure you understand sides are not congruent. I had that happen on a bunch of quizzes. So and if you I'm, if you care about your grades, pretty pretty good chance you're gonna need to retake that quiz. Uh, there were not any real great grades on it. Um, so these sides are in proportion. They are not congruent. They're in proportion. So that means if you had sides of one, two, and three in one triangle, then you could have sides of two, four, and six in the other triangle because that creates the same proportions. One half, one half, one half. But they, they're not the same length. A lot of you kept using the word congruent over and over again on the quiz. If it happened once, I might have forgiven it. But if it happened more than once, then I, I took off for that. Because that is, I mean, if it happened once, I should have taken off because it's totally wrong. They're not congruent at all. The angles are congruent. So that's the next thing. Sides are in proportion. The angles are congruent. So you've got to understand the difference between congruence and similarity. Okay. So sides are in proportion, angles are congruent. Uh, how did we prove that two triangles are similar? There are three ways. Dealt with having some initials as letter, not initials, but some acronyms. What were the acronyms we learned? Like there were, yeah, so there were side, side, side. So if we knew all the sides, like here, and we could figure out that the sides were all in proportion, we could say, okay, because all of the sides are in proportion, side, 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 those triangles are similar. What else? Not angle, side, angle. That's what some people wrote. Uh, I think I took off for that. Side angle side. Yep, close, but it's got to be the exact right thing. Side angle side. So again, if the two sides are in proportion, and then the angle in between them is congruent. So it was a figure like that, where you had like two and three and Four and six. Oh, actually, that wouldn't work. Oh, yeah. So, something like that. So, that would create a fraction of two fifths. Oh, I got to talk about this. So, there, those are equal fractions. That's 0.4 and 0.4. So, here's what some people did on the quiz. I know why you did it, because it actually works sometimes. Some people said this, oh, well, if I just put two over three, you didn't add the two and the three together. 
And then if I said, I'll just put the four over the six. Ah, uh, that works. And you know what? It does work for that problem. But if you remember, well, you won't remember. But I told you in class, that will not always work. And guess which kind of problem I put on the quiz? One where it didn't work. And yet, a lot, uh, pretty much everybody missed this problem. Everybody put in that the sides were like that, basically. And let's see, I can let me come up with a number that works. Oh, it's not easy to do. Um, well, actually, yeah, I can do it. Let's see. One and two. So let's say that was the third side. These proportions do not work when you compare it to the third side. So if I was going to say two over three, so again, I'll use the same two over three. That's what people did on the quiz. Then they took these two sides. These two sides are not split. That's the whole length of the triangle. One is the whole length of the small triangle, two is the whole length of the big triangle. That doesn't work. You cannot do that if you're dealing with a side that's not split. The bottom part of those triangles is not split, just the two sides are Sorry split. for being late, I woke up late. All right, well, go ahead and have a seat and get ready to work. So I would have to say two over five. So again, these will work. If I do this and I said, OK, well, that's the same thing as oh, I did that wrong. Hmm. I'm going to do I'm going to do good this part. How's your name? It's pretty good. How about yourself? It's good. Yesterday, I'm the, my dad yelled at me because I got empty in class. That hurt my heart. Hurt your heart? You should give me a. I told you I'm going to pay you back. Hmm. For some reason, that is still not working out. So I did something wrong. Because that's still not working out. What did I do wrong? Four. It's four tenths. Four it's tenths. And it should be four tenths. Oh, this has to be. Um, oh, I don't even know how to do that math in my head. Mm. Ah, uh, Muhammad, bud, we're working today, so you came in late. One thing when you get here early to do that, but not. We got stuff to cover. So here, I'll do it that way. It'd have to be 0.4 and 1 to work out. So then if you said 0.4 over 1, that would be correct. But the key is you sometimes you have to add those together. And, and nobody did that. Like, I don't think there was a single person that added them together on the column on the quiz. Everybody just put whatever was here over here. Whatever was, here. well, there wasn't one there. It was these two sides. You can't, six is not the whole length of that side. You can't compare that to this side that is the whole length for the big triangle. You have to add them together. So for those of you that are going to retake that, you have to remember for the retake, and, and really, it works when we do today's lesson, too. It would still work. Um, but today's lesson is about the shortcut where you can just take the two sides that are split and just compare the parts of those triangles. Um, but, but again, that's only possible because we're comparing the sides that are split and we're not looking at the side that's, that's the whole side, the side that's not split. Uh, all right, so go ahead, pull your pages out. We're going to page 101. We'll do two examples, again, depending on how fast we get through them. We'll be done pretty early, although the last class didn't really finish early, but they were not very engaged, so they just sat there and did nothing. So if you sat there and do nothing, then it'll take a lot longer. Uh, so what I want you to do, first of all, just read the theorems, the two theorems. And I'll give you the shortcut. Oh, I'm still recording. What page? 101. Actually, tell you what, I'm going to record this class too. We'll just record this one. I think this one will be faster recording. I'm going to do it a little differently than I did with them. 
we'll just get the whole lesson out of the way pretty much and then we'll do practice. Yeah, you need calculators. Go ahead and grab one. Actually, tell you what, I'm going to create while you guys are doing that. Let me, I'm going to show you in this. Let me see if I already have a figure. Be really nice if I did, but it does not look like I do. Oh, bro. Bro. Um, let's see. Ah, so on page, so I'm just going to give you like my quick version of the lesson. So I'm going over the two theorems on page 101. I'm just explaining what they're saying. If we have a triangle, uh, let me move that a little bit. And if we know these lines are parallel. So we went over before like parallel lines, corresponding angles. That would mean we know that angle is congruent to that angle. We know that angle is congruent to that angle. We also know what else besides those angles that I just highlighted. Top angle is congruent to itself, right? It's part of both triangles. This angle is a part of the little triangle, right? It's a part of this triangle. But it's also a part of the bigger triangle. And since it's the same angle, it's got to be congruent to itself. So it's also all three angles are congruent. So these are similar triangles. All three angles are congruent. If really just two are congruent, then you can say it. But if two are congruent, then all three are congruent. So we know those are similar triangles. So what the theorems are stating, they're kind of stating two things. If we know that the two parallel lines or the two lines are parallel within the two triangles, then we know that the individual parts are also in proportion. So the three over the six would equal the four over the eight, which it does. Again, if you know these two are parallel, then you know those are similar triangles. And we've proved that before. It's not really anything super new. But before we said technically you should have to put three over three plus six and say that equals four over four plus eight. That's the way we did it before. Now what we're saying is, well, if you know the two lines are parallel, you really don't have to do all that. You could just say three over six has to equal four over eight. Basically, this line is splitting them into equal proportions because it's parallel to this. If it splits this one into three and six, it's got to split that one into four and eight. Either way, however you want to think of it, the proportions have to be same for the individual parts, not just the whole side of the triangle, which is what we learned right before spring break, the whole side of the bottom or the bigger triangle. The second theorem is just saying the exact same thing, only backwards. It's saying, well, if we know, uh, 
minus the other roots. Yeah. If we know that the sides are in proportion, so let's say they didn't tell us the lines are parallel, but they did give us all of that other information about the sides. If we know that the individual segments are in proportion to each other, so if we know this is true, then we can say the opposite. We can then say that we know those lines are parallel. It's the same exact thing, it just goes the other way. If you know the lines are parallel, then you know the little segments are in proportion. If you know the little segments are in proportion, then you know the lines are parallel. Again, it's, it's, they both have to be true. If you can prove one of them, then you can prove the other thing. So that's really both of those theorems. That's all they mean. Nothing super, super new. It's a little different because before we were dealing with the entire length of one of the triangles. So this six plus three was the entire length of the big triangle, whereas the green segment was just part or just the small triangle. Now we're not dealing with the entire length. We're dealing with individual sections, individual segments. But we still have a now the proportions are not the same. Three over six is not the same proportion as if we were dealing with the whole triangle. These down here would be one third and one third. These up here are one half and one half. So again, this is why people missed it on the quiz. They tried to compare individual segments of the triangles to the entire segment of one of the triangles. That doesn't work. We cannot use the segment that's not split. This down here is not split. That one, you'd have to do it like this, where you compared it to the entire length of the big triangle. So I don't know how I'll do the quiz yet, if I'll put both of them on there or just one of them on there, but you have to understand you can only compare the sides that are split to each other. If the side isn't split, you can't do it that way. You got to use the whole length of, of the, the sides. So this six would have to be compared to this, or this when you set up your proportion. The two doesn't really change because it's still just one of the sides of the small triangle. It's when you're dealing with the big triangle and you try to compare. So I don't know how the practice problems, I don't, I doubt very seriously practice problems that you're about to do. We're gonna go back to that concept. So that's one you just have to make sure you can keep straight especially since some of you, well, most of you are going to have to go back and retake that one. I can see you getting confused. Now, the good news is you can always do every problem this way. So you'll see when we go through and do the two examples, I'll actually do them both ways. I'll do them the new way and I'll show you the old way still works. So if you just want to learn the old way and just if you really understand that, and that makes sense, just always do it the old way. Algebra is a little bit tougher, but uh, it'll keep you from making any mistakes and doing it the wrong way. Any questions on that? That's the whole lesson right there. And now we're just going to do some practice. All right, so look at the example on 101. They've pretty much done it for you. Go ahead and finish it out. All you got to do is the algebra part. They set it up for you. They, I'll go, I'll still go through it, but uh, page 101, example, should be example one. I'll give you like a minute. All you have to do is the algebra. They've already set up the proportion. You just have to do the cross multiplying part to solve. I'm going to do attendance while you do that. By the time I finish, finish attendance, we'll go ahead and go over it. Uh, maybe I'm not going to do attendance because then it'll show up on the recording. Uh, so far, so good. How about yourself? Why did you give me that? That was so terrible. I didn't give you anything. You earned whatever you got. I, mean, I, I give you what you earn. Yeah. My words in life. Next time give me a pay. Right? I mean, some people do get luckier in life than oh. others, but. Next time give me a pay. But I'll tell you this there are very few people that do absolutely nothing and wind up being very successful. Unless they really came from a pre rich family. And even then, sometimes their parents are pretty high. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Like, yeah. There's, there's like a lot of air. Like their dad worked hard for them. Like me and my dad said, you could buy me a house and a car. If I go to college, but if they said, I'll be a bum kid and stay at home, and, you know what I mean? He said, I'm not going to do anything. He 
himself. But he said, if I go to college, and I work hard, he said, you know, do it like a lot of stuff. I would go to college and work hard then, if that's the case. Yeah, I'm going to college. I've got a good GPA. I've got a good GPA. I'm a little higher than that. Yeah, I'm trying to get 3.0. Yeah, that's a good goal. 3.0 is a good goal. But I give up on your uh, class. I'm sorry. Is it slipping? Oh, that 3.0 thing. Just got a little tougher than if you're giving up on my class. No. That's too long since I got to see that you just did. All right, go fast. Did you do that problem? All right, I'll look at it while you're gone. What'd you get? An actor. So we got? So we did the iron. They set the whole thing up for you and everything. Like normally they make you the Yeah. The one of one of the examples today, they they did the whole thing. They, like there's nothing you have to do. They did the whole entire problem. What'd you guys get back there? What'd you get? You're in. Yeah, exactly. I mean again, Nyla doesn't even have her pages at all. I'm looking on her page. Something. So what'd you get? We're doing together. Mm-hmm. So what'd you get? Um five. No. Can I say something real quick? Oh boy. <laughs> well, Marcus, sister. Huh? Can you say uh, hey to my brother, Marcus? Huh? Mar Marcus the third. Marcus the third. Yeah, you're your brother. Yeah, no. Oh, he's Marcus the second. Yeah. Oh. Can you say hi to my brother? No, I'm missing, but no problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can I I mean, yeah, but I say, I don't know when I saw him. I'm not gay. But he's a real gangster. Alright, that's enough. Go. You've already told us you're a gangster back in the day. Yeah, back in the 80s. Way back in the 80s. But now I'm a nerd. After yesterday, what happened between me and my dad? We were gonna start a uh, fight, and then mm, said, with each other or with other people? No, with some other people. Oh, well, it's a good thing you yeah, did. Yeah. But he got mad at me because I got one hand. Like, bro, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, Mr. Gill. I, uh, I love you, no homo. But like, your class is hard. Hmm, it's not as hard as people think it is. You just work. Yeah. It's hard to get an A or a B. I'll give you that. But it's not hard to get a C. No, because you, you don't let us use our notes. If you don't let us use our notes, it will Nobody lets math people. Wait, again, wait till you get into the other math classes. I am definitely not in the hardest math class. Trust me on that. Ask other people that have geometry. You ask anybody that has Hemsley or Pinsker how they feel about it. Their geometry. Uh, all right. So I would encourage you to always write the information in the figure. I think it makes it a lot cleaner. So for P to C, that is 15. Make sure you understand that is from point P, so right there, to point C. Just that part of the left side of the big triangle. Uh, B, P is 9, so again, that is from point to point P. So what is B, C? B, C, B, C, B, C, no. I mean, BC, segment BC. Nine. Well, it would be those two added together, right? Nine is from here to here, and then another 15 means BC, and, and you don't need that, but I'm going to show you how to solve it using what we already knew before spring break, how we really didn't even need all this new stuff. Uh, now they say that what? Uh, oh. Q to D is 14.5, so again, that is from here to here. And then we're solving for that. I'm going to actually make it a variable instead of a question mark because I'm going to use it in the. They use BQ. I'm going to use a variable. So instead of saying BQ, I'm going to use Y. So what they're saying is using our new theorem, if I know that these lines are parallel, then I know those individual segments are in the same proportion. That's all they're saying. Same thing I just told you a minute. So 9 over 15 has to be the same proportion as y over 14.5. So if you do the math, you solve it out. Hmm. 
You come up with that. If you divide that out by divide by 15, you should get. Yeah. And that makes sense because if I they're in proportion, if nine over 15 has to be in proportion, well, 14.5 is just barely shorter than 15, which means y should be barely shorter than that. So it makes sense if I think about it after the fact, too. Because if everything has to be in proportion, y has to just be barely smaller than 9, if 14.5 is just barely smaller than 15. Now, here's the part that I told you. You don't even need this new theorem. We learned before the break how to do that same exact problem. The algebra is a little bit tougher if we do it, but we could say the smaller triangle, which is from B to P to Q, we could say that triangle is in proportion to the bigger triangle, BCD. So I could say 9 is the small triangle. What's the length of the big triangle on that same side? 9 is the length of the small triangle from B to P. What's the length from B to C, we said? About 15. 15 is not the whole side. You have to do what? Say it again. You have to add them together. This triangle is from here to here. So we have to take the 9 plus the 15. So this is what we learned before break. And this is what you need to do on the retake. Because like I said, I don't think, it's, at least so far, I'm not done grading. Not a single person has gotten that one right yet. Uh, let me set this one up and then I'll let you go. So we would then say, OK, well, why if I want to create so why is the other side of the small triangle? What's the length of the big triangle on that side from B to D basically? Chanel, get off phone. Please. Answer the question. What's the length? What is it? What's the answer? So you need to be off phone. Because again, you're going to be retaking that quiz. I don't think anybody in here isn't. Right? Every one person. But I don't think anybody got 100 on both grades. I think I might have had a 100 and an 80, maybe. Maybe not. What is the length of the big triangle where the Y on the Y side of the big triangle? Nora, what's the length? Yep. Big triangle. So the big triangle on the left side is the red. We had to add 9 plus 15. So what's the big triangle on the right side? Uh, what did you say? I don't know. Is it good? Because you guys, you guys, do you understand how I got the, why I had to add 9 plus 15? Yeah, you add the two together. It's the same thing. You guys just freak out when there's a variable involved. I don't, like, you're still just adding the two things together. You can have variables in an equation. You can have them in there twice. You just add them together. It's the same thing we did in the other side. But as soon as there's a variable in it, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. You do the same thing you did when there was a number there. Now the math, if you did this, so that's 24 times y equals uh, and then we would have 9y plus 130.5. So if we subtract 9y from both sides, we would get 15y equals that. Same exact thing we got over there. So you didn't have to know all this new stuff. It's shorter. But again, if you truly understand that one concept, the smaller triangle side is in proportion to the bigger triangle side. You don't need any of this new stuff. It's the same exact concept. They're just making it like a little quicker to do. So I don't care how you do it on this next quiz. If you want to still use that old method, you really want to practice that for your retake, you get really good at that, it will work. And you will never run into the problem of where if you have a number down here, oh, I don't know, that's 
shorter tin, you know what that might be. If you have a number down there, you'll never run into that problem where you set it up wrong if you're just always using the, the full length of the side, like you're adding the two numbers together. Because this is the way it was on the retake, and you couldn't just put 15 over 10, you had to say not, I mean, again, I'm just using these numbers, this, this is not the problem that's on there. You had to say nine plus 15 over 10. And nobody did that. Everybody just put one of one of the little segments over the, the full length of the other side. Can't do that. Uh, go ahead and set up the check problem if you didn't already do that. Oh, now you know. I mean, I'd like you to set that up. I'm going to give you one minute to set that up, and then I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm not even going to solve it all the way out because I want to make sure we get to the other example. So how's your day? Mm, just as good when you ask me to continue to. How's your day? That was good. Good. Uh, that was like normal, but like. No, I was going to say a little late to school today, but other than that. Um, GB is 14.4, so I'm going to write some of the stuff in so that I don't have to do it in a minute. Uh, this one is a little trickier, so I want you to think about how you could do it. I don't care how you do it on the quiz, so if you can do this the old way, it's actually easier to do the old way. So from G to H is 21. They give you the entire length, which is why it's actually easier to do the old way. I'll give you a minute to try to set something up. I would not do this the new way, by the way. I would I would do it the way we learned before spring break. I think this is much easier to do the way we learned first than this particular way that we just did it. Here. Actually, I'm going to get rid of all that other stuff. Is anybody copying down anything? You have it in your. Now we have a little more room. Mohammed, stop bothering people. She's working hard. She's one of the only ones. Uh, yeah, uh, I yeah, I seen her. I seen her in A's and B's. I told her to if we can, if she can, if I can cheat and come here, but she said no. Yeah, she always could give her a different version of the test anyway. So that wouldn't work out too well. Next time we get a good one. So. Yeah, that's probably never gonna happen. So she just told me you're gonna cheat. You're gonna want to keep that kind of information to yourself if you want her to give her the same version. That's kind of like in Despicable Me Too. You should always announce your weapons after you fire them. Lipstick taser. <laughs> I did not love Despicable Me Three. Can I use the somebody down. All right, so in this particular problem, I think it's way easier to do it the old method. I know the length of that entire side. I could say, well, what if I wanted to solve for just GC? And I could basically set up a proportion that is Y over 21. So again, the short side or the one of the sides of the small triangle over the entire length of the big triangle, which means what would I make that equal to if I did it that way? Let's see who figured it out. Mia, what do you think? Kagan, what do you think? Any idea? Uh, who else can I call on? Chanel, what do you think? Anila, what do you think? Over what? Nope. 
is is 4.8 the entire length of that time? Because that's what you're telling me it is. If I, because 21 is the entire length of the right side. So, so 14.4 4 is right. What are you talking about? On the top, that would be correct. Yep, 14.4. 14.4 plus 4.8 on the bottom. You have to add them together if we're talking about the entire length. So I'm going to just write it out so that people see where we're getting that. If you're dealing with the entire length of the side on the right, the 21, then you have to use the entire length of the side on the left. And that will work. That's the way we learn before spring break. That's the way I would do this one. Now let's say we solve it out when we get Y. They also want to know CH though. How do I, once I get this, once I figure out what GC is, so I'm saying this is Y, once I figure out what Y is, what would I need to do to get CH? You have to add a CH. So what would we do to get CH? If we knew Y, so we, would to avoid a and GC. we would subtract, right? This is how they're telling you to do this problem. They're saying to make this CH length right here, 21 subtract Y and then to create a proportion using the individual pieces. So you would say 14.4. Now I can use 4.8 because I can use just this little piece as 21 subtract y and y. And then you would set those equal and you do. You'll get the same exact answer. I don't care which way you do it on the quiz. If you remember how to do it from before spring break and if that way just makes sense, do it that way. If you know, because this would have been a little tricky, I think, for a lot of people to come up with, you got to create that first. So for the, do you do a butterfly method? And then solving, you always, yeah, anytime you have a fraction equals a fraction, it's always the butterfly. So you, you'll you see if you do the butterfly, you get the same exact, at some point, your equations will be the same. So you always do that if you have two fractions equal to each other and you're trying to solve for a variable. Because if you notice, we say 4.8 times y here, well, we're going to say 4.8 times y there also. So you eventually get to the same exact result. Uh, all right, so let me just show you. I'm not going to finish that one out because we got to get to the next, the only other example we're doing. So turn to page, page 102. Uh, no, we're inside of 10 minutes now. And you need to see this anyway, because it's the only other part. So here's the only other thing they're saying. We already went over it in the lesson. We are saying now, you notice they didn't tell us that the lines are parallel. They're asking us if they're parallel, which means we need to try to prove it. Well, the way that we prove it, uh, LX is 20, um, LY is 5, and JX is 4 times as long. So what we're, so we know, boy, this would be a little bit of a stretch for you. I won't do it anything like this. We know JX is four times as long as WJ. So let's say we don't know WJ. So variable, right? It's an unknown. What would JX be? What would I write for JX? If this is Y, we know JX is four times as long as WJ. What would I write? 4Y. Yeah. So this would just be 4Y. So they used X, I guess. So that's where they're getting their proportion from. If you solve it all out, you do get the same proportion. So if you get the same proportion, then you can say yes. That is true. The individual parts are in proportion. So the only way that can happen is if JL is parallel to WY. Uh, it's the same concept. That was a little trickier because you had to you had to understand what they meant by four times. 
as long as WJ, you'd have to understand you need to use a variable to represent that. Um, so it was a little trickier. This is somewhat like that. So I want you to try to do the check on your own. I'm not going to do it for you. So um, I'll give you the same hint that you haven't noticed lately. There have been a lot of problems straight from the book on your quizzes. I want to say the last quiz, every single problem I took straight from the book. I don't even know if I changed any of the numbers. Maybe one or two problems. Uh, those, those were both straight from the book. Um, the first six, I think there were, out of the first six, I think four of them were straight from the book. So if you're doing the book problems, you get through all the practice problems I give you or that I mentioned. Sometimes they're the checks, sometimes they're examples, sometimes they're the practice problems at the end of the lesson. You will have seen half the quiz already. A lot of you haven't caught on to that, I can tell because it's the grades. But there's not a lot of new stuff that you shouldn't have already seen on the quiz. So if you try one and you don't know how to do it, you should probably ask me how to do it. So when you're taking the quiz, you've seen it before. Uh, write the numbers into the figure. I would always start with that. Okay, yeah. you. Good. So again, that's the same thing as what we just did. That means 1.7 times JR. So instead of four times something, it's 1.7 times it. So it's, I know it's weird that it's a decimal, but you do the exact same thing that we did in the one above. You make one a variable, and then the other one is 1.7 times that variable. I don't know that I'll do them like that because I, I like I'll look at the practice problems. I'm also going to look at Excel to see if maybe some of the Excel's we can start using again because I have a feeling this.